Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is our first day on the job site, other than when I did the initial estimate, of course. But here's what we're looking at, a complete remodeling of this backyard. Uh, the concrete's all coming out, all the dead grass and weeds and bushes. Um, side yards, it's all coming out. They have a big time drainage issue here. The concrete's too high along the house. It doesn't drain out on the side yard. So um, you can see this is standing water. I guess that just stands there, you know, indefinitely. So it normally treats it with bleach and what have you. This is our first low boy going in. We actually went through uh, two of these and about five or six dump trailer loads. The patio cover is coming down, and there won't be a there won't be a new one going up because the way this house is situated and the house is along the side of it, this backyard gets no sunlight ever. So we're going to start by removing that. They had some small footing. So you can see the size of that footing on that pose. About 8, eight, inch, eight inch by 8 inch footing underneath that. This air conditioner. We had HVAC company come out just to relocate it temporarily. And possibly move it back in after the concrete came in. But uh, when he came out and there was an oil leak in the unit, um, it was beyond repair. So it's not going back in either. That ended up going to a recycling yard. We're going to be adding some drains in here. We're going to be doing three uh, area drains in the backyard. And we're going to loop it. We're going to make a big U underground three inch drain pipe exiting both sides of the house at uh, back of city sidewalk the only thing I was concerned with in getting the right slopes here in minimal slope and uh, getting to the drains and still being below the floor level of the house was the footing of the uh, property line wall that was really my only concern on this particular project that I uh, was thinking about at this point how far how deep can I really go before I hit the footing that's the idea of this so what we did was we went down basically we went down to top of footing of that block wall and then we just ended up pouring over it and we still had less than two percent slope back um, to the drain system Okay, so whoever did this concrete, uh, they weren't concerned about how much concrete they were going to be using because this stuff was about 6 inches, 7 inches thick, and it varied. But there was no steel in it, fortunately, so it came out pretty easy still. And the nice thing about the depth of that concrete is that it's less expensive to get rid of concrete than it is dirt. So um, that worked out pretty well because we had a big hole here because of the depth of the concrete. So a lot of the dirt just slid right on over to this low point. The reason the concrete's less to get exp uh, or less expensive to get rid of is because they just recycle it. So the dumps uh, take it for a lot less money because it gets crushed. It's utilized for underneath pavers, road base, stuff like that. So if you notice, this entire patio is above the weep screen, which is something that you never want to see or actually do. So we're going to be lowering the level of the concrete below the weep screen so it can, uh, you know, air out whenever water gets in the stucco. The idea of those weep screens, there's holes in the bottom of that galvanized uh, weep screen that holds the stucco up. And the, the water, if any water gets in there, it comes out the bottom and just gives it a little air. So we'll be dropping this elevation down. We're going to go about 
Mm, just enough to get a trowel underneath. The orange line you see here is where the drain system is going to go. We're just going perfectly parallel to the house. So we'll have three drains here. In between uh, each drain, there'll be a high point so the water will break both directions. Rather than just 90ing this um, on, the, on the turn going down the side house, we just 45'd it. In case you, in the future, you know, if someone wants to run a water hose through there or a snake or anything like that, um, it's real simple to do with 45s. You can just push it right through all the way to the end. Now right here, uh, we just so far we've kind of just went by eye on the grade. And now we're going to start driving some stakes, pulling some string lines and see how close we really were. And uh, you can see I'm cutting down a little bit more there. So I was a little off right in that area. I was about an inch and a half high there. So we're cutting a little more dirt out. Those steel stakes you see sitting there, those are the high points on the valley. There's going to be an actual valley um, lining up parallel to those top of area drains. And in within that valley, there's some high points that break the water in different directions. There's that footing of the wall. So that's as deep as we could go anyway. We got lucky with that wall footing being low enough. And because we're going wall to wall concrete, we're going to put expansion foam. The expansion foam does does a couple of things in this case. It actually, uh, since it's right up underneath the weep screen, we're gonna it'll have a little bit of breathing space there, as well as we won't be bound in by the two uh, fixed wall and house. So it'll give us some movement to the slab. Now on the compaction, what we did is initially we just flooded this before we even ran the plate compactor. We, this actually sat with a lot of water on it for about three days. We wanted the water to penetrate deep and saturate. And then we went ahead, once it got to a dry point that we could run the plate on, that's what we did. Three eighths rebar, two foot centers in both directions, 18 inch overlap. And then we're going to use uh, fiber mesh reinforcement and we're going to use 3000 PSI concrete. We have a sewer clean out over there. No one even knew it was there actually. We just found that by removing the old concrete. We found what it was, we found a coffee can that was completely deteriorated underneath the concrete. When I pulled that coffee can up, lo and behold, we had a sewer clean out down there. So we just brought it up to the surface, put an easy access brass cap on top. Now all these stakes you see here, those are uh, establishing my elevations for top of concrete. My screed's going to ride on, the, on those and we can pull a rod off of that. I just double stake it. I'm riding on a 16 penny duplex through a two and a half inch wood stake. The steel stake on the other side is just to, to hold that um, from falling out of that saddle. Basically what's going to happen, the plans on this is a basketball court, possibly a tennis court, and maybe a raised planter bed along the perimeter property line wall. 
anyway that about wraps up this this is part one of a, a multi-part series make sure you like subscribe and don't forget check out my uh website odell concrete we got a new storefront some new items there also we got a new instagram page have a good one